uh, on the grapevine that within a year, Angela Rayner will be gone. I can't, I can't tell you uh, who, who, has, who has said these sort of things, but, um, it, it, you know, on the grapevine, on the Westminster grapevine, it is suggested that they're going to find a way to work um, Rayner out. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually think it would be a shame if rainer has gone. If nothing else, she provides excellent meme meme values, meme value, right? Um, but she is a lol cow for the right, but I think that for the left, or for, or for Starmer in particular, she is a pain in the ass, basically. Um, you know, she overcame that that scandal she was involved with. She backed Diane Abbott, um, and she is elect. The de see the problem is is that the deputy leader is directly elected by the party's membership, giving her an alternative base of power to Starmer. Right? This is an issue. This is an issue because it means that Rayner kind of has a force field against Blair. Got a for I mean, imagine how m annoying that is for Tone to have this idiot. Um, so you've got Blair on the one hand, you've got Blair saying, Look, listen, we need to put the woke away. We need to like, you know, do all the stuff, tough on crime, cause of the crime, mecha blanket, do all the stuff, do all the things, do all the stuff academic agents be telling telling you for the past five years. Okay. Um on the other hand. The party membership have different ideas, of course, because they're Labour and they're full of idiots. And, um, you know, we, they're stuck with this woman as the deputy head. So I mean, this is going to be a this is going to be a problem for Starmer uh, if if they if they can't find a way to get rid of her. Um, so, <laughs> and they've tried and they failed so far. But uh, let's see. It's not as easy as just firing her, you see, because different power base. You see, power is a check on power, and this is a different. This is a rival castle within Labour. You see, um, okay. Next, the godfather, Tony Blair. Let's see what they actually write about him here. Starmer will forever live in Tony Blair's shadow as the second Labour leader swept to power after a concerted effort to wrest the party away from the left. The pair have an open line of communication. And Starmer moves on to the next big challenge, turning his campaign success into effective government. Blair championed the two men's connection when he invited Starmer on stage for a fireside chat slash pep talk slash you will listen to me <laughs> um, and his influential think tank, the Tony Blair Institute, which is already furnishing the new government with both policy ideas and key staff. Starmer has said that he talks to Blair a lot about how his predecessor prepared for power in 1997. Blair's reach within the current party cannot be overstated with a Blair grandee, uh, with a Labour uh, grandee immersing himself in blue sky questions about what AI means for the future of humanity, while Starmer battles more pressing demands. Blair has previously insisted he will not act as a backseat driver <laughs> for his successor, though was notably quick off the mark with some public advice for Starmer on immigration policy in this weekend's Sunday Times. The new PM is certain to find himself wishing for his predecessor's guidance, whether directly or indirectly, when the chips are down. All right, so we know about Blair. There's also the Prince of Darkness, Peter Mandelson. He has been very, very present in the Labour Party stuff. He's been at all the conferences. He has been all over the radio and the TV coverage on election night. He was like a rash everywhere. Mandy was there. Um, and, of course, he is also Mr. L New Labour 2.1, um, and he still has some pull within the party as well um but i you know he's closer to i still think he's closer to blair than uh appearances suggest um 
so let's uh, carry on. Now, now they, these are the important people here now. Morgan McSweeney and Sue Gray. So let's see what is written on these. In opposition, Morgan McSweeney was Labour's campaign director, perhaps the most enigmatic figure at the centre of Starmer's world, and also the most crucial. After working in local government, he joined Labour Together, a think tank and campaign group dedicated to winning the party back from Corbyn and the hard left. McSweeney worked on Starmer's 2020 Labour leadership campaign after deciding he was the best placed candidate to steer the party into a more electable position. He was right. McSweeney is widely credited with driving Labour's winning strategy through a combination of close attention to data and a conviction that the party needed to win back the disenchanted and the alienated, shifting back towards the centre ground. An Irishman married to one of the Labour's new Scottish MPs, Imogen Walker, is expected to play a central role in shaping the narrative of Starmer's nascent government and targeting victory at the next election. His importance to the entire Starmer project is impossible to overstate. So it's important to get your head around this guy here, Morgan McSweeney. He is the new Alistair Campbell, basically, if you want to put it that way, or the new Mandelson, if you, um, or Mandelson and, and uh, Campbell rolled into one. It's this man here. And, um, you know, he is not going to like the fact that the huge looming figure of Blair is backseat driving, constantly over the shoulder, whispering in Starmer's ear. And it's like, hold on a second, I'm the one running this show. And, um, you know, power hates a rival castle. Well, this That even works on this tiny little micro scale of the court intrigue within the Labour Party. And I think McSweeney, may be a rival castle to the Dark Lord himself. And that's going to be a central struggle. Is McSweeney going to be able to outflank Blair with all of his resources and all of his power? That's going to be interesting. Anyway, we'll come back to McSweeney in a second because unheard, who is it for? I've got a piece on that, which I'll read in a second. Next, there's the fixer, Sue Gray. Starmer's chief of staff is a woman of apparent contradictions. She, jo she joined Labour last year after more than 40 years working her way to the top of the politically neutral civil service. <laughs> yeah, neutral. Uh, she is notoriously hard-nosed, yet also, reportedly, a great deal of fun. What's that link, then? What's the great deal of f f fun? Um... Oh, yeah, OK. All right, then. Something to do with party game. Her task so far has been to make Labour a more disciplined, tightly focused operation, earning her both diehard fans and enemies in the process. Gray's reach is an extensive one, covering the party's relationship with the top civil servants, trade union bosses and management of the shadow government. She takes a special interest in matters of ethics, having previously served the cabinet's office um, uh, most senior enforcer, will be on hand to navigate the murky personnel issues as they arise for Starmer and his new phalanx of MPs. Now, Sue Gray, I, I know less about this woman, but I do know that she is, uh, she's talked about a lot. I mean, I watched a piece um, with uh, uh, David Starkey on New Culture Forum the other day after the election, and uh, Starkey was going on about uh, Gray as well, Sue Gray. Um I would uh I would like to know um if she has any relationship with Blair. Hmm. I would like to know some of the history between if she was a civil servant, that means she could have worked with Blair or she could have you know, being bullied by Blair. Because, let's face it, the Labour new, Labour new Point One. Yes, I get the impression, if I had to guess, I get the impression that Sue Gray is an anti-Blairite. Yeah, look. Look at this. Inside Sue Gray's battle for control of Labour, 
Glenn Owen and Dan Hodges reveal how Starmer's overbearing right-hand woman is plotting against. It's treason, man! Plotting against the Blairites in face-off over the levers of power. So, I mean, this is uh, this is a problem. This woman is a problem if she's against the Blairites, right? Because it means that the factionalism that we talked about is already there at the very centre of Starmer's government, okay? And you can imagine the scene, can't you, right? Starmer's got his little team with his Sue Gray and his McSweeney and all, all these little minions around him, okay? Um, they're trying to get things under control, and they're just surrounded. I mean, imagine a spider's web. Imagine Blair as a spider and all of these little, all of these Blair minions swarming around Starmer, trying to bring him in, trying to wrest him away from 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 Gray. Um, so uh, yeah, this is uh, very interesting, very interesting indeed. And um, yeah, I I don't know, I I see a bit of drama on the horizon when it comes to when it comes to uh, New Labour 2.0, because power cannot tolerate a rival castle, and Blair is not going to take this. He's not going to He's not going to be like, right, we didn't do all this work to get to manoeuvre New Labour 2.0 back into power, only to be pushed out by this stupid woman. Uh, so anyway, let's carry on. The old hand, there's... Pat McFadden, um, he is a uh, another chap. Now he is a uh, um, a Blair Brown era guy. He was around during that era. Um, there's Matthew Doyle, another New Labour guy, um, special advisor to David Blunkett, again a Blairite basically. There's Wes Streeting. Uh, this this chap here, uh, uh, he is an uh, is a kind of mover and shaker within the Labour Party, I guess. Um, and um, there's Darren Jones, this fellow here. He is a, I think a uh, Starmer man. Like he's gonna. You see, this is the thing: is that. Every new king or prime minister, in this case, every new prime minister has to create their own people, right? People who are loyal to him. Um, and I get the impression that this Darren Jones may be a Starmer loyalist, or, or at least Rachel Reeves one. Um, there's Torsten Bell, who's a, who's a, who's a wonk, this chap on the right. Um, an Anglo-Swede, well-known and well-liked figure parachuted into a safe seat so there, there's there's a bit of wonk there um now i'd be interested to know torsten bell's relationship with the dark lord have they appeared on stage together is he that is he that kind of high up or is he or is he not let's have a look uh hmm no, he he is being called a Starmer trooper. He is being called a Starmer trooper. <laughs> Starm trooper, fucking hell! Meet the Starm troopers. <laughs> ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. There, she, look, there she is, a Starm trooper. So yeah, I mean, this is the danger basically for the Dark Lord that uh, Starmer has got his own ideas. You know, uh, I don't get the impression that uh, Torsten Bell is Blair aligned just from the looks of things. You know, it's pretty obvious usually when somebody's Blair aligned or not. It's not it's not opaque most of the time. Um, and then we've got the hard like the, the handler, Jessica Morden. While her name is unknown outside Westminster circles, Morden is an important backroom operator. 
parliamentary aide. She's effectively the eyes and ears. She's Starmer's spy, basically. Spy. Um, you know, it will help with the enforcement stuff. Uh, okay. 